Hi guys. So in this video, we're going to be talking about shock. Now don't forget to watch it all the way to the end so you can find out what shock is and how to treat it. Now the type of shock we're talking about in this video is not the type of shock where we're going to go, oh, how lovely, thank you for doing that surprise for me. Or, ah, there's a ghost over there or I'm scared kind of shock. The type of shock we're going to be talking about in this video is medical shock. Now there's four types of medical shock. Do you know what they are? Have a little think. Do you actually know the four types of medical shock? Go on, pause and make a note. So first of all then, we have hypovolvemic shock. Hypo means low, volvemic means volume. This is the most common type of shock. It just means there's insufficient blood circulating around the body, normally due to a hemorrhage, or it could be because of severe vomiting and diarrhea. Then we have cardiogenic shock. Now this is caused by a failure of the heart to pump correctly, so a heart problem. And it's normally due to damage the heart muscles um, through an MI or through a cardiac valve problem. Then we have obstructive shock. An obstructive shock is normally caused by an obstruction as the name suggests. So it's an obstruction of blood flow outside of the heart. So this typically occurs due to reduction in the venous return, but it may also be caused by a blockage of the aorta. Then we have distributed shock. And this is normally caused because of an abnormal disruption of blood to tissues and organs, and it includes um, septic shock, anaphylactic shock, and also neurogenic shock and septic shock is caused by an overwhelming infection that cannot be cleared by the immune system. And anaphylactic shock is caused by a severe reaction um, to an allergen, anaphylaxis. And neurogenic shock arises due to damage to the central nervous system, which impairs cardiac function by reducing heart rate and loosening the blood vessel tone, resulting in severe hypertension. But in this video, we're going to look at one of these types of shock. And the one we're going to look at is hypovolvemic shock. Now the human body roughly has about 10 pints of blood inside. And shock begins when we lose about 20% or one fifth of our body's blood or fluid supply. At this point, our heart isn't able to pump sufficient amounts of blood through the body. And eventually we will die when we lose 40% of our blood or fluid supply. So hypovolvemic shock severely limits your body's ability to get blood to all of your organs. And this can lead to organ failure, which of course can be deadly. Now while your body fights to meet its demand for oxygen, it's going to make three core organs the priority to receiving oxygen. So your lungs, your heart and your brain. These are the three main organs that actually need the blood first in order for our body to function. Now let's have a look at what happens to our body. So let's take a look at our skin first of all. Our skin is going to change colour. It's going to go very pale, cold and clammy to touch. Our behaviour is going to change. We're going to be, get, get very anxious, agitated and eventually we, be, could, we could become unresponsive. Our limbs are going to feel very weak and fatigued. Our ears and our eyes well, we're going to feel very dizzy. Our pupils are going to enlarge. We're going to have very blurred vision. We're going to start feeling nauseous or we might actually vomit. And our breathing is, become, is going to become rapid and shallow. We're also going to have air hunger. Air hunger is, feels like when someone's put a plastic bag over your head and you're kind of just gasping at whatever breath you can have. Now let's have a look at how we treat somebody who's in shock. First of all, shock, as we said before, is a medical emergency. We must make sure we call the emergency medical services straight away. We must then treat that person's blood or fluid loss. So if it's bleeding, we need to bandage it, put pressure on there, bandage it. We then need to lay them down and lift their legs up in order to help the blood circulate around our vital organs where it's trying to keep um, them alive, such as the brain, the lungs, the heart. Then we're also going to keep them warm because we've already said the skin will become feel very cold to touch and they're going to start feeling cold. So we'll keep them nice and warm and we are reassuring them. But the sooner that person gets help, 
the better. Now the severity of shock would depend on the amount of blood or fluid loss. But if a significant amount of blood has been lost, then the situation could be life-threatening. With less blood, there is less oxygen in the body. Even if the patient starts to feel better, they must remain laying down with their legs raised until the emergency medical services arrive. It's also really important that we do not give the patient anything to eat or drink. They might be very thirsty, but please don't give them anything to eat or drink. Two reasons. One, because they might need an operation and you don't want them to vomit under general anaesthesia. And the second one, and probably the most important reason, is if they give them something to eat or drink, the digestive system needs blood in order to start digesting the food and the fluids you've put in there. If the digestive system has blood, then you're taking it away from the organs that need it, the heart, the lungs, and the brain. So please don't give them anything to eat or drink. The term we use for that is nil by mouth. Now, if you want to look at how we treat bleeding, I'll show you that on an, another video. I'll just leave the link above here for you. So don't forget to hit that link to have a look at how to actually bandage and treat bleeds as well. Thanks for listening, guys. Don't forget to check back for the next video next week. So hit the subscribe.